Hi, this is Simon Obstall. I hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. Now, somebody asked me if I could explain how to make a difference here in Apple Motion. So here we go. This is a tutorial that explains how to do that. So what I've done here is I've grabbed two objects, this earthenware pot and this blue plastic case, and then I've sat them on my MacBook Pro and I've then removed them from the scene with the camera locked off. So we just now just have the background. So I want to be able to cut out these two objects from the background and then put them over a new background. So the basic procedure is very, very simple. The layer with our objects needs to be on top and we need to set its blend mode to, surprise, surprise, difference. And you'll see immediately that we have the beginnings of a cutout. But we need to do a little bit of processing on this to make it usable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an alpha channel here. So let's switch the view to alpha so we can see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this group. I'm going to come to filters, color, channel mixer. I'm going to set the alpha alpha to zero, and then these other values, I'm going to crank up to their maximum. And now we've got this black and white cut out, and all we need to do is process it a bit to try and get rid of some of that noise in the background and solidify the foreground, because you can see some areas here are gray that ought to be fully white. So we're going to select the group, we're going to come to color and levels. And bearing in mind here, of course, we're working on the alpha channel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select alpha there, and then I'm going to use that white value to solidify the foreground, and then just a little bit of tidy up on the black like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group, and I'm going to add my pot layer to that. So drag that into there, bearing in mind we need to switch that back to normal, and we want to switch our view back to color. So this group here that I've made the Kia in, I'm going to call it Kia, and I'm going to turn it off. Then I'm going to select my pot and add an image mask, and I'll use the Kia and drag it in like that. So now, if I were to make another new group and we bring in generators gradient. We put that group at the back. You can see we've got our objects cut out onto our new background. Now, there are a couple of major issues here. The first one is that, if I turn this group off, you can see it's all just a little bit noisy. So especially this shadow is particularly noisy. So what we can do is we can select our pot layer there, come to blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to set that value up to 20. And I'm also going to copy that onto my other layer. So Alt drag that onto my other layer. And if I select both of those and turn them off, you can see, although we've got a little bit of softening on the mat, it's really helped with that noise there. And it's also removed some of that extraneous detail that we had before. So if I turn that off, you can see we had a little bit of shine off the laptop there, and uh, those, those blurs have, have removed that. You'll notice we've got an edge here, and that's because we need to enable crop on the Gaussian blur. That removes those. So that's a little bit better. It is a little bit soft, but that's probably worth it just so we get a better result in terms of the noise and everything. If I were doing this for real, I would definitely split this up into different areas and use a heavy blur like this for the shadow area at the bottom, but I'd use a much lighter blur for the rest of the foreground to keep it nice and sharp. But here I'm just giving you a simple overview of the overall process. So what are we gonna do about the fact that our pot has got these bright areas here where the light is hitting it. It's shiny, shiny, bright reflections. And it's effectively now see-through. The mat is, if we switch to the alpha channel, you can see we've got holes in our mat. So first of all, I want us to understand why we have got that hole. 
And the answer is very simple. We are asking the keying process to work on the basis of the difference between the background and the foreground. And in this case, there's very little useful difference between the specular highlights on the pot and the bright wall behind it. And the same thing would apply if we were trying to key a very dark area off a very dark background. There are some advanced tricks we can do with splitting the channels to try and squeeze the maximum difference we can out of the background and foreground, but that's quite a bit too complicated for this tutorial. So one of the ways we could try and address that is by cranking the levels very, very hard. So if I grab that white value and we really push it, you can see I'm filling in that, that area there, but really at the expense of the rest of the key. So the shadow's gone completely crazy there and, and that's, that's really no use to, to us at all. So I wouldn't really recommend this as a route to go, but I'm going to switch on, on back on my background and I'm going to draw your attention to something that is often overlooked when we're trying to key reflections. If this is our background, this gradient here, this area here is actually an accurate reflection of our environment. So there's a very good case to be made for not trying to make the mat solid at that point, because what we're actually doing is getting a nice reflection of our, of our gradient environment. But if you were to say, no, 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 I really, really want the original white reflections, this is what I would recommend you do. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here, and I'm going to select my keyed element there. I'm going to come down to the Bezier mask tool, and I'm just going to draw a very rough mask, like so. And what that's done is it's added that area back in again over the top. So whatever you're keying, I, I would suggest this is by far the best way of trying to fill holes. Don't over crank the actual key itself. Just simply spend a little bit of time just adding that area back in again. It's really, really not too difficult. Uh, in terms of, you know, you're not doing fancy roto, you're just making a basic mask to, to bring that, back, that, that detail back in again. So that's probably what I'd suggest in this case. So there you go, that's a difference here. We can swap out any background here. Let's try something else. Let's try this, and you see it works pretty well. I would stress that a difference key can be useful, but it does come with a lot of problems. The first being that you do have to have a locked off camera for it to work. The second big issue, as we've discussed, is noise. And the third major problem is that you need a sufficient difference between the foreground and background in order to get a proper key. So you can't be keying black off a black background and you can't key white off a white background. But all that said, with a bit of ingenuity, you can often use it to save a lot of time consuming rotoscoping. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again soon and stay safe.